Hello, so this is me in a marina, which is quite unusual, but I'm in Venice. This is actually the island of Venice. There are certain restrictions about entering Venice as a visiting boat, but I could row down some of the narrower canals, but there's nowhere really to stop because every mooring space is taken. So it's easiest to find one of the marinas and this is one very much for local boats. So this is where I'm staying while in Venice. And I've just done lots of washing. So <laughs> I'm washing all the way along, along the pontoon. Well, it's in fact a jetty because uh, Venice, not having very big tidal range, they don't, they don't really go for pontoons. So I'm spending a few days exploring Venice. This, right down the southern end of the of the main island is lovely. It's little cafes uh, that aren't very touristy at all and it feels very natural and relaxed. There was a little bit further to the north around St Mark's Square, of course it's, it's complete mayhem. But Venice, Wow, what a place. It's just extraordinary. It is just extraordinary. And it shows, I would say, the advantage of a small trailable boat that I can contemplate bringing my boat three days drive down to the lagoon here for a couple of weeks sailing in this area, which is utterly remarkable. After a 1,600 kilometre drive from my home in Western Brittany, Aveldro was craned into the water at a friendly sailing club just alongside the bridge and causeway which links the island of Venice to the mainland. Two John Wellsford designed pathfinders were already lying at anchor just off the sailing club. We were here to participate in the Vela Raid, a cruise in company of mainly Italian and French boats around the remoter parts of the Venetian Lagoon. Hello, so this is sailing in the Venetian Lagoon. Venice in the background. This 
is the special Italian chart of the Venetian lagoon. Down here is the main island of Venice and it is linked to the mainland by a bridge and causeway. This is the sailing club where we start off and then we're going to sail across this area of the lagoon over here and then round the top of Murano. In a lovely soft breeze and warm Italian sunshine, we sailed by the island of Murano and on across the lagoon to a little channel on the Isle of Mazorbo, where most of us ran aground. lovely it's really quiet it's nice it's such change Venice nowadays I can see why people move, are moving out but somewhere like this it's, it's charming utterly charming the the lagoon is extraordinary once you get away from Venice it feels really remote Torcello was the original island where the people of the lagoon lived before they moved to Venice. So this island has the oldest church, the, the, the cathedral here is older than St Mark's in Venice. But the island is, is now almost deserted, there's hardly any buildings here at all and it gives you the impression of what Venice was like before all the buildings were built. <laughs> the Duomo at Torcello is breathtakingly old. It was built between the 7th and 10th centuries, so it is far older than any cathedral in Britain. Our chosen moorings for the night at Torcello were not particularly sheltered. So after our meal in the restaurant, I decided to scull my boat down a narrow little channel that bisects the island and find somewhere to moor that was more peaceful. So a quick look at the Italian chart again. Here is Murano and we sailed across this area of shallow water avoiding the main channel but you can sail anywhere outside the channels the deeper colour blue means the water is deeper and then we arrived at the entrance of this channel which bisects the island of Mazorbo and we went through there and up to Torcello over here and I spent the night, as I said, up a little channel that bisects that island, which is hardly visible on this chart. In the morning I walked across the island to find the rest of the flotilla. I found them moored between posts in a main channel. 
including a pair of traditional Venetian lagoon boats. At this point I was on my own. It's really difficult filming a flotilla of boats when you are on your own. This is one attempt. The Venetian Lagoon. Wow. Today I was thinking it was going to be quite a relaxing day, bobbling around the Venetian Lagoon. What we did was set off from Torcello, so that's sort of quite far north in the lagoon, and we've sailed all the way past Venice, and we're now in the southern half of the lagoon, and we're just going up a, a creek to wherever we're stopping the night. I <laughs> don't know its name. So, um, yeah, it's, it's really interesting. Gorgeous place, utterly gorgeous place, but it's actually the sailing can be can be challenging. It's it's not a doddle, isn't the Venetian Lagoon? And it's just vast and varied and exotic. It's just extraordinary. And there are islands everywhere. day was really rather complicated so I'll just deal with the second half of the day to give you an idea. This is the main island of Venice and we pass south of it between the Lido and the island of Venice itself. And just about here I took my pictures of the centre of Venice, here's St Mark's Square just up there. And then we sailed on between these islands and down to the edge of the chart. So on the next page, we sailed past those islands and across this large area of shallow water and into a deeper channel in the far corner over here. So that brings us on to this next page of the chart and this river down there. We sailed up this narrow channel and wove our way between the saltings all the way up to the edge of the lagoon. This is mainland over here and we sailed up this narrow channel into the remote far corner of the lagoon where we moored. In the morning there was very little wind. But fortunately, two delightful and helpful Italian women offered to give me a tow down the channel between the fish traps and through the saltings and out into the wide lagoon again. The members of the flotilla were all Italian or French, except for this one Austrian boat and, of course, one British vessel sailed by me. We anchored for lunch in the middle of the lagoon and had a little swim. Cargo ships diverted from the channels around Venice use this part of the lagoon. Most of today was retracing our steps from the day before crossing the southern part of the lagoon and we arrived eventually off the southern part of the island of Venice and passed between it and the Lido and avoiding this shallow area here. The Lido here and this area of land shelter the lagoon from the Adriatic and this construction here is the new tidal barrier which for the first time this year has started protecting Venice against the high tides 
that used to flood it. We then sailed up here and landed at this area here, which is at the end of the island of San Erasmo. And this area is the traditional beach of the people of Venice, with a very sympathetic bar and also a little harbour. Two Wellsford pathfinders spent the night moored side by side. It was another morning with no wind, and so once again I gratefully accepted a tow from one of the other boats. We stopped for lunch at the main village on the island of San Erasmo, a lovely sleepy little place with hardly any traffic and where most people work in the horticultural industry growing vegetables in the farms that virtually cover this little island. What can I say about the Venetian Lagoon? The remoter, <laughs> the remoter reaches of the lagoon are just empty and lonely and normal, extraordinarily normal, if anywhere that is lots of islands that are linked by little ferry boats can possibly be normal. But you drop very quickly off the edge of the of the tourist hotspot that is Venice, and Venice is one of the most touristy cities in the world, obviously. This is half a day's sail from Venice. It's just Wilderness, wildlife, amazing, quite amazing place, and vast and intricate, beyond imagining. The channels, the islands, the little keys. By this time I was beginning to realise that the Vela Raid wasn't just about visiting wonderful remote parts of the Venetian Lagoon. It was also about finding stunning restaurants and this night was probably the best. A wonderful meal under tented canopies outside a lonely little establishment in this far corner of the lagoon. This is the island of San Terasmo and we sailed along its northern edge and then joined this main channel heading into the far remote areas of the lagoon. Turning the page, our voyage continues on the other side. We continued up this river and turned left and into this little creek. This whole area is very quiet and very remote. A series of shallow lakes on both sides of the navigable channels, remarkably reminiscent of the Norfolk Broads. weather the next morning was very Norfolk-like too, with a little bit of drizzle and a big overcast sky. Except, of course, in Norfolk you don't normally see the Alps. I ought to show you Giorgio's boat, the organiser of the raid, a very interesting little cruising dinghy, completely adapted to the environment of the lagoon. Thank you. 
We retraced our route of the afternoon before, but stopped at the small island of San Francisco del Deserto. This had a narrow little channel, just large enough for our whole fleet to moor up. This is home to a community of Franciscan friars who allow you to look round their monastery. This was the last day of the Vela Raid. We returned to our friendly little Casanova sailing club. But the holiday was by no means over for me, because Italy had just lifted its quarantine against people arriving from Britain, and so my friend Mary flew out to join me in the lovely area of Venice at the southern end of the main island. A place we didn't go to in the Vela Raid, and I was very keen to see, was Kyosha. This is a little fishing port right at the southern extremity of the lagoon, and rather like a mini Venice, but much less well known. So Mary and I sailed far across the wide open spaces of the southern lagoon, through narrow channels among the shallows until we reached the little town just as the sun was setting. It is like Venice but much more relaxed. If not as ancient it has some very interesting buildings but unlike Venice it also has road traffic. Also a great pizzeria and good places to go for breakfast as well. As Koja is the main fishing port of the lagoon, it also has a vibrant fish market. <laughs>
There are large yards for building and maintaining fishing boats, and the whole place has a workaday, lively feel about it, and it's clearly a real working port. It is extraordinarily appealing. I like Chioggia very much. In fact, if I were visiting Venice again, I would probably use it as a base. So it was with a great deal of regret that we sailed away and headed for Pelestrina to the north, an island that had been strongly recommended to us. is that a main channel runs all the way along the edge of Pelestrina, which is busy with both commercial and pleasure traffic. Not all the traffic was particularly noisy though. Pelestrina is a long, thin island between the lagoon and the Adriatic Sea and it has no space for any real agriculture but quite a lot of boat building. One of the problems of sailing in the more populous places in the Venetian lagoon is finding somewhere to moor up for the night where someone won't come and turf you off later on claiming that it's their mooring. I spent quite a lot of time on finding mooring posts with no indication whatsoever of anyone renting or owning them. This seemed to be a suitable place to stop but even so, we had to spend a long time setting up the ropes to resist the wash from passing speedboats and cargo ships. We then had to adjust the position of the boat so that we could get aboard from this little plank to one side. Pelestrina was almost as sleepy as San Erasmo, a lovely little place. morning we continued to dribble slowly along the edge of Perlestrina. It was lovely and peaceful other than all the powerboats. Pelestrina is clearly where all those characterful Vaporetti and ferries are built and maintained. We crossed paths with two of the other boats from the Vela Raid. At the end of the long, thin island of Palestrina, there was another entrance to the lagoon, and then we carried on sailing up the side of the Lido 
in less and less wind. We finally found a little more wind in the open water at the main entrance to the Venetian lagoon behind the new Moe's tidal barrier. This is a friendly little marina at Treporti which is on the long thin strip of the mainland which separates the northern lagoon from the sea. Other than on the Vela raid I had hardly seen anyone else under sail, let alone someone under sail in another traditional boat, so this was nice to see. I have resisted confusing you with the chart for a while, but at this point we decided to explore the canals around Treporti to get a sense of the wider hinterland of the Venetian lagoon. It is in places like this where you discover the workaday wharves where all the goods are loaded to be taken to all the islands of the Venetian lagoon. The barge traffic was very polite. Speedboats, less so. to visit Burano because we'd sailed past it so many times on the Vela raid and not actually stopped. Just had lunch and we're planning what to do for the afternoon. Piranha's a little touristy after the islands we have been visiting, but it's very interesting. I've never actually landed here before. Very colorful island, all the houses are painted bright colors. And it was the traditional center of lace making. Beyond Burano, we drifted and dribbled to the northeast, deep into the remote regions of the lagoon. This is the rather creepy Ossery Island of San Ariano. We are in the canal La Cura and Mary is cooking dinner. It's Canale, Canale La Cura. The Canale is actually a river and uh, on each side are wide lakes that flood with the tide and I imagine in winter are used for hunting birds. And just um, behind us is the, um, I'm going to have a look it up, here we are, the Osario di San. Ariano, my Italian is appalling, but that is the Ossery Island where all the bones were dumped after having been exhumed from the cemeteries. And it is a famously weird and mystical place which we haven't anchored all that near. Oshery Island of the Venetian Lagoon. Strange, remote, up narrow unmarked channels. And here we are. Come up to the landing 
single stage. Uh, yes, well, I <laughs> didn't know that. It was the normal practice to dig up cadavers after they had been in the ground for about 20 years and then take the bones and stack them somewhere else. And this is what happened here. Jan Morris tells a story of clambering over the wall, dropping down the other side and crunching on bones. But the interior of the island is now completely overgrown with brambles. And also you're in the way. Now this is this a really good start because I've got a wind. Get a bit where I don't really like them. Really good at it. <laughs> I don't have to face the wrong way. We worked through the narrow channels between the Osario and Torcello and Mary wanted to show me how good she was at sculling. So we have twos and threes today, three until three o'clock and then it goes back down to two and then down to one. So we're going to lose the wind this afternoon, as every other day. Ask me to be the skipper, then not be a good crew. From a mild I'm man. Also, slightly worried there's a bit of a crease in the yeah. Well, you can control that by hauling on the downhill. Maybe it needs not stacking them off. And then a final night on the peaceful island of San Erasmo. With me, let's leave the past.